Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is going to help all of us take our businesses to the next level. But before I talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmodo.com and most importantly if you're not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek scott todd how are you mark i'm great how are you pulse is normal respiration's fine um not drinking the best cup of coffee i've ever had but it's okay it's time what, to get is that marrow bread by chance <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. it. It looks like it could be Panera Bread. I'm not sure, though. It's not. It, look, look, I have standards, Scott. I'm not, I'm not drinking Panera Bread coffee. Okay. Let, let, me, let me tell you, I get a lot of flack over this whole Panera Bread thing, and I have to do a lot of unwinding to convince people that I don't really go to Panera Bread. And for that purpose, though, I think, Mark, because of how, like, how much we talk about Panera Bread. I'm just waiting for them to sponsor this podcast. And maybe our guests could give us some tips on marketing to them. I think that's a great <laughs> segue into our guest, Fazil Musa from theleverageadvantage.com. If you don't know about Fazil, he is a serial entrepreneur, marketer, and trainer. He is the accounts and brand director of the Leverage Group, and he addresses audiences internationally. In fact, Right now, he's international. Fazil, where are you located right now? Uh, today, I am in Singapore, uh, but I've, I've only spent like four days in Singapore this month. I've been all over the place, Jakarta, Bangkok, uh, Kuala Lumpur, um, Bali over the last month or so. I think these are all really good places to hang out. Maybe, maybe not Kuala Lumpur, but um, the rest of them sound amazing. But anyways, uh, Fazil's expertise is to help companies design develop and deploy strategies to take their businesses or companies to the next level. Fazil, welcome to the podcast. Um, let's just kind of rewind the tape and tell us how you became serial entrepreneur and this, this uh, marketing genius. <laughs> that's, that's a really great question. I don't, well, um, I, I kind of decided very, very early on in life. Like when I was 17, I started my first business. Um, that was a long time ago. And what I did was I made custom audio CDs in a time where you couldn't customize your music experience, right? So back then, if you wanted to buy, if you wanted to listen to music, you had to buy either an album where you heard like 13 songs from the same artist or a compilation where you had absolutely no control over what you could listen to. So I created a superior product um, and I, I sold it and that, I was, I was still in high school and I was making 30, 40, sometimes $50 a day. Wow. Wow. So yeah, from that experience, you then did what? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so right now I'm 35 this year, right? So I've been in business 17, 18 years now and the, the, the thing is, I didn't get the opportunity to learn about business from my parents. They're both employees. So I, it took me maybe 10 years, almost a decade to learn by trial and error exactly what I needed to do to, to build a profitable business. I mean, my businesses were always profitable. Was, we, I always started with zero dollars down. That's, you know, that's what I learned from reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But I, I never really got to crack six figures until until maybe five years ago, five years ago. And that's, that's when I actually hired a mentor and he showed me all the blind spots I had and he showed me exactly what I was doing wrong, exactly what I needed to do uh, to crack six figures. And then we went on to do seven, um, you know, to do more than a million dollars a year together. So Scott Todd, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking he's going to tell us what the blind spots were. Exactly. So what were the blind spots? Because I'm sure your blind spots are probably the same blind spot we have. Well, so here, here's the thing. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a story. When I, when I met my mentor, um, 
you know, he wanted to come to Asia. He was already very established. Uh, his name is Christopher Duncan. You can go and you, you can go and search him, ChristopherMDuncan.com, right? And when I met him, um, he was huge in Australia. He was huge in New Zealand, and he wanted to come to Singapore. So many people wanted to partner up with him, um, but he chose to partner up with me, and I was so grateful. Now, in two and a half weeks, um, we put on an event and we filled it up with people. Uh, there were exactly 42 people in our event and we walked away at the end of the day with $46,000. Now, before that, I hadn't made $46,000 in, in one day or, or two and a half weeks, right? Um, and he showed me exactly what I needed to do online to fill a room. And he showed me exactly what I needed to say to these people to get them to take action. Now, the things that he taught me back then was he was really holding my hand every step of the way. But as I was learning that, I, it got me understanding the concepts and the structure, especially communication structure, um, in order to get people to, to, to take action or to do what, what you want them to do, really. I mean, have you ever wished that you could say the right words in the right sequence in the right way to get people to do anything you want them to do? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I ask Scott Todd for uh, relationship <laughs> advice all the time with my wife. So, you know, and uh, he's like, dude, I don't know. He's like, <laughs> I, you know, he's, he's a pilot. So he's like, I just flew my wife to lunch. That seemed to really help. But like, I don't have that. So <laughs> what, you know, so is, is there a structure that we can use that would make us super persuasive? Uh, for, for the you know the clients and relationships in our lives that so we can help you know get our way so to speak well well um there there are some basic principles that we that, that we've got to keep in mind right i think a lot of people when they're communicating they're always thinking about themselves they're always thinking about you know what can i get from this person and this is not this is not new i think a lot of people know that uh you know the 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 most interesting radio station for most people is what's in it for me right wwifm um and, and so that's the first thing we want to, that's the first thing we want to keep in mind when we're talking to somebody else. What is it, what is in it for them? All right. And then, and, and here's the thing, let, let's talk about businesses for a while, right? A lot of businesses are talking about how great their solution is, how great their product is. And they don't realize that nobody really cares how great your product or service is until they know what problem it solves and that they have that problem. So the first thing that we always do in, in effective marketing is it's always about making your target market aware that they have a problem, right? Because if they don't have a problem, they don't need you. So we always, we, we're all, and we're always going about educating people what their problem is. Once they know they have a problem, they're going to look for a solution, Right, so the next thing we do is I don't tell them that that I'm their solution, and this is this is the really trippy part. I and I love this part because it's so hypnotic. What I do next is I teach them how to select the right product. Right, so I, what I tell them what an ideal solution looks like, and I tell them um, this is what you need to look out for in in an ideal solution. And only then later on, I tell them what my solution is. And coincidentally, it looks exactly like what I told them they need to look out for. That's so trippy and it works so well. Interesting. Scott Todd, thoughts? Okay. So look, we, we sell land, right? Like that's, that's our, our deal. And, you know, yep. there's, I always say that there's four reasons why people buy land. One, they, they need a place to live today. They, they, um, you know, they, they want a homestead there. They want to live there eventually. They want it for recreation or they want it for a long-term investment. Okay. So, you know, it really goes back to the, not necessarily the problem that they have. It's more of like wants, right? Like most people that are buying my product don't necessarily have a problem. They, they have wants. Okay. So how do I, how do I tell them like, Hey, you actually have this one and I can fulfill it, for, help you fulfill it. But perhaps what we can do is we can reframe that into a, into a problem, right? So the people that are buying land, say, for investment purposes, the problem they want to solve is, is extra cash flow, whether it's for retirement, you know, um, 
in, in marketing, right, the first thing we want to do is we always want to be extreme. We want to be specific, very specific about our target market. If you look at all the people that bought land from you, right, and you look at the demographics, who, 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 which of them, you know, carries the biggest proportion, right? Are they primarily young professionals, primarily mid-career professionals? Are they primarily retirees? And then we want to focus on that and find more of them because, the people that are buying land as young professionals and the people that are buying land as retirees are doing it for completely different reasons, right? So pro- probably the young professional is looking for, for a piece of land which he could potentially build, build a house on, build a home on. And maybe the retiree could be looking to build a home, but they're probably also looking for, for some kind of investment, right? So what I, what I would do is I think every want can be reframed into a problem that you can solve. Because here, here's the thing I feel. If you want to get somebody to take action, uh, I'll give an example, right? Um, do you normally buy painkillers or do you buy vitamins? Or which, which one has more urgency? Painkillers. Painkillers, right? Because yeah. you're feeling the pain. You want to you wanna, you wanna, you wanna resolve that fast. And so if they're not feeling the pain, if we can't make them feel a future pain now, then we can't get them to take action. Right. So even though we look at it as they have wants, like they want a piece of land or they, they, you know, they want an investment, that want is there to fulfill a specific purpose or to fill a specific void or uh, to solve a very specific problem. Okay. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Physical, what is some of the worst advice you see or hear given in your area of expertise? Oh my god! Um, one of the things, one of the things that really, really irks me when it comes to marketing businesses, especially small and medium enterprises like you know, um, uh, F and B, mom and pop shops, and there are so many of these marketing experts and and gurus. They just go to them and they say, "Here's here's how you're going to solve your problem, right?" How you're going to solve your problem is uh, we're going to run Facebook ads for you. That's going to get traffic and that's going to get people into your your shop. Or they go to them and say, Here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some search engine marketing. We're going to pay Google, uh, pay Google some money and we're going to get traffic. People are going to see your shop and then they're going to come in. Or they say, go and do some search engine optimization. But the problem with that is all oh, this is very tactical, right? It, and it only solves one problem. That problem is traffic, right? Now, when, when we go to companies, we take a very strategic we take a very strategic view to it. And, and traffic is just one part of the solution. And the, the worst advice is that all they need is traffic because what that then does is you're just giving them a steering wheel or you're just giving them an axle. You're just giving them a wheel and you're not building them the whole car. And just the wheel, just the steering wheel, just the axle is not going to do anything for them. And that's also the reason why so many um, small and medium enterprises that engage these uh, fly-by-night marketers, they, they say, oh, you know what? Online marketing doesn't work. You know why? Online marketing doesn't work for you because you engage somebody who doesn't know how to work online marketing. Yeah, that, that, that does make sense because they're, they're ignoring the fundamentals, which yes. is what you alluded to before, which is what is your target market? What is the pain? How do you solve that pain? You could have all the traffic in the world, but if you're not addressing those fundamental issues, well, it, it, you're just wasting your money. Um, exactly. Yeah. So what do you believe is normal or wise or cool that other people think is just crazy? <laughs> Here, here's, here's the thing that I, I do that everybody thinks is, is so weird, right? Um, Every client, every single client that we take on, the first thing, regardless of what they, they, they get from us after that, the first thing we always tell them to do is go and, do your, go and do market research. We will do your market research for you. And we, don't, and we don't interview 500 people, 200 people, 100 people, 20, 30 people. Actually, we only interview five people because all we're looking for is uh, our language patterns. And that's all we use. The only thing we use from the target market interviews are their language patterns. Because here's the thing, a lot of people don't, and, and it's only five people, and every single one of them has to do it. The craziest thing that I see is that 
almost every company that we that we speak to haven't done their market research. And we're even I'm even talking about multi million dollar companies. Uh, they're they're grinding, they're pushing it. They're, by by sheer force of will, they're making a million dollars, two million dollars a year. Um, but they haven't done their market research, and so they're completely clueless as to as as to how to scale their business further. Wow, well, only five people, Scott Todd. That's all you what, do you, what, do you, what do you think of that? So, am I recording these sessions? Am I um, to get the language pattern? Am I what am I what am I doing? Like, I get I get five people in a room. I get five people individually. What does that look like? All right, so so I'm gonna break it down for you. You guys can use this for yourself. Your, your listeners can use it as well. Um, so what we do is we obviously we build a, we build what is known as a target avatar, and we only need five people to do this, right? Um, there's there are a very specific set of questions that we ask, but very but very very specifically, here's what we're looking for. We want to know what their one biggest fear is, right? So when somebody's buying land, right, you need to know what their biggest fear is, right? Um, and then the next thing we need is we need to know what their three biggest frustrations are, right? Um, and then we need to know what their one biggest aspiration is and their three unmet needs, okay? Um, so those, those, that's, that's really a lot of the psychography. Also, what is their self-identity? Meaning, what do they say after they say, I am? And then, we, of, of course, we need to know what their demographic is, their names, I mean, their, their gender, their age, what their, um, their jobs are, and how much money they make every year. And just interviewing these five people, what we're looking for is not statistical significance. What we're looking for are language patterns. What are some of the phrases that, that these five people use that, inter, um, that, that, that overlap, right? And from there, that's what we use to build our marketing copy, their biggest fear, their three biggest frustrations, their one aspiration, their three unmet needs, and their self and their identity, their self identity. Genius, genius! I love it. I love it. And um, you know, if you're you know if you're looking at like beginning copywriting courses, a lot of yeah. this is not addressed, right? They'll yes. they'll kind of skim the surface of this. But this is really kind of getting to the heart of the matter. And then from there, the copy kind of just writes itself in a way. But if you talk to any advanced copywriter, they'll tell you 85% of their job is what Fazil just mentioned is the research. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I think that's why uh, copywriters make so much money. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, you know like, the old saying, a good copywriter writes good copy, but a great copywriter writes copy that sounds like you. Exactly. And, and you know what? Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the marketing that we do, um, like a lot of the work that we do, um, just, comes from that, just comes from that one document. Like you said, the copy writes itself. Um, if you can find five people um, and, and they, you can find the patterns among them, if you can get them to answer those questions, you can find other people that are just like them. All right, fantastic. So, Fazil, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put your business back to zero, okay? All I'm right. going to start over again. And mm -hmm. what would then be your very first step in going from zero to a million? What's the very first thing that you would take action on? So do do I have do I have my knowledge or or do I start yeah, from yeah, complete you zero? Knowledge. You have your knowledge, but you're you've got to start over. What's the first thing you're right. gonna do? Jeez, the first the first thing I'm I'm gonna do is I, I wouldn't go into consulting. You know, I wouldn't go into building a huge company and um well th that's not what I would do at the start, right? So the first thing I would do is I would find um 10 people, 10 people who run businesses that are making anywhere between a million to $2 million that want to grow to five or 10 million, right? And I will take them on as one-on-one -on -one clients. So these people would ideally have their own marketing team, right? And so all I would do with them is I would do strategy. I would, I would coach them on strategy. I coach them and show them exactly what their marketing team needs to do. 
um, and I would charge them anywhere between ten or fifteen thousand dollars a month, right? And they have twenty four hour access to me. I do that for a year. Um, then I would I would have after expenses and taxes maybe about a million two million dollars uh, a million or so, and then I start over from there. Scott Todd, not a bad, not a bad strategy. I, and look, living in Bali or wherever you are, man, it's like uh, cheaper living over there, right? I mean, compared exactly. to America. For, for Pete's sake, Mark, he, he missed the best part, which is I'm going to move to Bali first. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it's, 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 it's unfair. It's just unfair. That's phenomenal. Well, we could get you know, guys, day. like, that one day it's easy it's easy guys like well you know i live i live in singapore at least that's where my mailing address is and singapore you know is probably one of the most expensive places in the world to live right like other you know outside of say london new york tokyo um sydney um but we're, i'm so fortunate that we're, i'm surrounded by these by these beautiful paradise cities and and beaches all you know Bang, you know, all over Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, just all within two hours. So, um, if I'm in, I'm, if I'm in the information business, um, it's easy. It's great. It's great. Fazil, what are some of your most gifted or recommended books? Uh, I I have a very specific set of books that I. Um, that I give to any one of my students, right? So I always tell them the first book you're going to need to read and you read it in two days or one, right? Is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, especially if they have zero experience in, in business, zero experience in personal development. I tell them the first book you're going to read is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I know a lot of people say, you know, you've got to read uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, I love that book, but it didn't have that much of an impact on me. And then, so the second book I always get them to read is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, right? And um, you could just change the title and call it Life and it would still apply. How to Win Friends and Influence People, um, there's a reason why that's one of the best-selling books in history. Um, the third book I get them to read is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Um, the fourth book I get them to read would the be Jack Mind, Canfield. Is that T. Harv Ecker? T. Harv Ecker. T. Harv okay. Ecker, exactly. That's the one. And, and that book also changed my life. Um, I, and from that book, I attended his programs. I, 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 I did quite a number of his seminars. I met a lot of amazing people. It got me started on, on this personal development journey. Uh, the fourth book would be Jack Canfield's 25 Success Principles. Um, just so you get your head straight. And the fifth book would be How to Talk to Anyone by Leal Loans. Um, and just these five books would form like the core of, of your, your, your non-formal education. If you want to get like bonus credits, you go read um, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And then that'll get you through middle school of personal development. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Scott Todd, any, uh, any other questions for Fazil before we go to the tip of the, of the week? No, I, I don't think so. All right. Well, Fazil, now we're going to put you on the spot. And ask you for your tip right. of the week, a website, a resource, maybe even another book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Well, I'll give you, my tip of the week is whatever you want to do, you got to find your point B, right? Um, if you want to be a, a superstar investor, then go and find a superstar investor and do whatever it takes, whether it's begging, whether it's working, whether it's paying, do whatever it takes to get them to mentor you. Because, you know, I, 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 I want to, I don't want to belabor the point, but I think this is really important, right? If you want to get to the other end of the woods and it's pitch black, it's completely dark, there's no moonlight, right? There are two ways to do it. The first way is you're going to walk around by trial and error. You could fall into a snake pit. You could step on a bear trap. You could, you know, hit your head on a hornet's nest and it'll take you a long time to get to the other side. The other way is to find somebody who's already taken that path multiple times and get them to hold your hand and say, hey, step to the left. There's a bear trap on there. There's a bear trap to, the, to your right. You know, step to your right. There's a snake pit on your left. You know, bend down a little bit. There's a hornet's nest above you and you get over to the other side much faster. So, you know, if you want to be a kick-ass investor, you know, it, your 
point B or, or your the person that will mentor you may not necessarily be Warren Buffett or George Soros. Um, it should be somebody who's successful in that field that you have access to or is close to the fringes of access so you can so you do whatever it takes to get there. That's that's my biggest tip. I love it. I love it. Uh, and we didn't even pay him for that tip. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, we're, we, we are the land investing Sherpas. And oftentimes, you know, people, um, you know, for whatever reason, they're afraid of, of having us as a mentor. Um, and not sure why necessarily, but I, I think it, it, it just, you know, what's, what's the saying? When, when the pupil is ready, the teacher appears. <laughs> when the student is ready, the master appears. Here's the thing, right? I think the reason why people are afraid to perhaps get uh, approach you guys as mentors is because they think in their minds it's more painful to, to come to you and, and get you to mentor them, whether it's because there are fees involved, whether because it's because there was work involved. But then here, here, here's a bonus tip, right? You, you either you pay with your time or you pay with your money, but it's never free. You want to do it yourself. It, you, maybe you don't have to pay money for a mentor, but you're going to pay with your time. And to me, time is so much more valuable than money. When your time is gone, you can't buy it back. When your money is gone, you can earn it back. So I'd rather, and, and here's the thing I learned from rich people is this, if they have the choice between spending their money and spending their time, they'd spend their money any day. So that's what, they, if anybody wants to learn if anybody wants to get to where they want to be faster, spend that money, get a mentor and save your time. Yeah. I mean, Fazil, you're, you're definitely, you know, preaching to the choir here. <laughs> I, Cause I, I say the exact same things all the time. Like I, I've gotten to the point now with my time, like I won't even looking for a parking spot. I will valet instead of looking you yeah. know, for a spot for five minutes. Um, exactly. I mean, it, it's crazy. So um, Scott Todd, your tip of the week. Mark, I have a quote today, and I think it, uh, I think it, hopefully it hits home with everybody, okay, because here it is. Don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. You know, the problem is, is that a lot of people are like, they're, they're not at the same pace, like they're not at the same pace as where you are or where I am or where everybody else is, right? And they want to look and like, I, I was talking to someone the other day and they said, oh man, I don't, I don't feel like I'm doing well because I heard on a mastermind call that so-and-so did five properties in one day, sold five properties in one day. And I'm like, well, that's cool for him. But what he's not telling you is that he may have gone through a period where he didn't sell anything. So, you know, like you're looking at the snapshot, you're not looking at like the whole story. So don't judge your success by other people. And you always say like, you know, uh, comparison is, is the thief of happiness. The reality is, is that, you know, you could be just in the beginning stages of something great. So don't worry about anybody else. Just stay your, stay in your lane, stay in your pace. No. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and it kind of takes the joy out of the journey when you're constantly comparing yourself to somebody else. Right. Um, I used to joke when uh, it was like 2010 and I was going through a hard time and, you know, 50% of my income went down. And um, I would say to my wife, I'm like, we, we need to get poorer friends because, you know, I, <laughs> you know my, my friends are, you know, doctors or lawyers and, you know, they're, they were affected, but they weren't affected like I was. And, um, and so I would, I would, you know, I would joke to her, I'm like, you know, I'll feel better about myself uh, if we can just do that. But ultimately, you got, it's, it's, it's an internal metric that you've got to work for. And, um, in, in focus on. And, and I think that's one of the great things about uh, your flight school, Scott, is that, you know, it's a group activity and you make it like, here's your accountability. We're doing this together. We're all starting in the same place. And if you just follow this recipe, you're going to, you're going to make this beautiful passive income cake. So just do it. And then, then you make them do it. And the accountability piece and the execution piece is, is really, I, I think priceless. Um, yeah. So I, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's a, a tremendous gift. Um, so my tip of the week is going to be learn more about Fazil and um, how he can take your business to the next level. Go to the leverage advantage.com, the leverage advantage.com. 
and uh, his mentorship of this podcast has been tremendous, but there's always more to learn. Go to theleverageadvantage.com and uh, we'll have a link to his site as well. Um, I want to remind the listeners that the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Fazil Musa is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandic.com. We are going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course for free. So please do that. And um, I might even throw a book in there as well. What do you think about that, Scott Todd? The Dirt Rich book. I think you have a Dirt Rich book that you can give away. I should just give it away. I'll give it away. So leave us a review, get the book. Fair? Fair fair deal. There you go. All right. Um, I want to thank all the listeners and uh, just remind everybody, let freedom ring. ring. There it is. Let freedom ring. Thanks, everybody.